the iPhone becomes a thing on this date. Welcome back to On This Date. Today's date is June 29th, 2023. It is the 180th day of the year. You got 185 days left in 2023. It's the 26th Thursday in the 26th week. If today's your birthday, your zodiac sign is a cancer. I guess it wouldn't be a cancer, it is cancer. Makes it sound like I just gave you cancer or something. Today is National Bomb Pop Day. <laughs> National Bomb Pop Day pops up on the last Thursday of June each year. So this year will be celebrated on June 29th. With its iconic and immediately recognizable trio of colors, the Bomb Pop has become part of American pop culture. Now, the Bomb Pop was invented by James S. Merritt and D.S. Abernathy in Kansas City, Missouri on July 30th, 1955. In 1971, it was trademarked. When D.S. Abernathy's company Merritt Foods closed down in 1991, Wells Dairy bought the business, including Bomb Pops. Bomb Pops originally weren't shaped like, I guess, that rocket looking thing. They originally were just kind of this long thing. The original flavors contain cherry, lime, and blue raspberry. As of 2015, there are nine main Bomb Pop flavors. Now they have other Bomb Pops like Fruit Bomb, Watermelon Bomb Pop, Hawaiian Punch Bomb Pop, Warheads Bomb Pop, Jolly Rancher Bomb Pop, the original but sugar-free, Banana Fudge, Lemonade, Tongue Splashers with Nerds, that one right there sounds like diabetes. Who hasn't enjoyed a bomb pop in the summer? I know I have. Interesting little thing, in 1999, a man named Stephen Labaton of the New York Times used bombpop.com as an example of why we need rules to protect children's privacy on the internet. He put on their website, any child who wanted to win a Nintendo Game Boy, all they had to do was fill out a form online with all their personal information, including their home address. Now, he never published any of this information. He just used it to take it to Congress, basically, and show them that this is dangerous. Anyone could do this, which I know it sounds creepy, but he was trying to get to a point, and I think it helped. In 2003, Walt Disney Company made a deal with Wells Dairy to release the Buzz Lightyear Bomb Pop. Over the years, like everything, there's been several competitors selling similar looking popsicles, and over the years, there's been some litigation against some of these competitors. And in 2014, one company sued saying that basically they didn't have the rights to cherry, blueberry, and lime. The case was eventually dismissed. So everyone go out and have a bomb pop today or buy a bomb pop t-shirt. All right, let's see what else June 29th has given us. 1889, Hyde Park and several other Illinois townships vote to be annexed by Chicago, forming the largest United States city in area and the second largest in population that was at the time. Now I think there's a handful of cities that are bigger in sizes and land, and then there's only a few that are bigger than Chicago in population. 1956, the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956 is signed by U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, officially creating the United States Interstate Highway System. 1972, the United States Supreme Court rules in the case Furman v. Georgia that arbitrary and inconsistent imposition of the death penalty violates the Eighth and Fourth Amendment and constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. 2006, Hamad v. Rumsfeld, the U.S. Supreme Court rules that U.S. President George W. Bush's plan to try Guantanamo Bay detainees in military tribunals violates the U.S. and international law. The problem was the Taliban or whoever were they were fighting that ended up at Guantanamo Bay were not part of an organized military, so therefore they couldn't face a military tribunal. The thing about military tribunals, if you're facing one, you're going to be convicted. There's not much wiggle room. 2007, Apple Incorporated releases the first mobile phone, the iPhone. One thing leads to another, and most of us can't live without ours. Now, this is a little interesting. I looked up how many iPhones have been sold throughout its history. And in 2018, they estimated that it was 2.2 billion iPhones. They haven't released the official numbers since then, at least that I could find. And I looked a few different places, but some estimates have it over 3 billion. Others I saw it was like 2.6 billion, 2.7 billion. There is over 2 million apps you could get for the iPhone. Movies released 
on June 29th, 1988, Coming to America. This is a romantic comedy following a prince of a fictional African nation called Zamunda who looks to find a woman to marry in America. The film earned Oscar nominations for Best Costume Design and Best Makeup. This is an Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall movie. Eddie Murphy plays the prince, Arsenio Hall's like his sidekick, and they come to America to find an American woman to bring her back to Zamunda and marry him. Because he wanted a woman from outside of Africa. Not knowing much about America, he opened up a map and said, well, we should go to New York City. And then they decided, this must be a sign. This is where you find a new queen. So they went to Queens. All in all, it's a really funny movie. They came out with a second one, I believe. It wasn't that good, but James Earl Jones was in it, along with John Amos and Eric LaSalle from ER. It was a pretty good movie. Really funny. There was going to be a TV series about coming to America, but no one ever bought the pilot. So they filmed the pilot and it's out there someplace. Nobody bought it and wanted to put it on television other than one time on CBS Summer Playhouse in 1989. That was it. Born on June 29th, 1953, Colin Hay. He was the lead singer of the band Men at Work, which they were big in the 1980s. And he went out on his own and had a semi-successful solo career. One song that never really got the attention like some of their other songs is Overkill. If you YouTube Colin Hay acoustic overkill, it's a beautiful song. Died on June 29th, 2020, Carl Reiner. I talked to him before when I worked at Netflix. I think I mentioned this before, but he'd call in occasionally and have questions about Netflix and things like that. But I always seemed to get him and I talked to him several times. A really, really nice man. And every time he called, we started talking about other stuff. It was so funny. One time he's, I'm all, Mr. Reiner, I got to tell you, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Jerk with Steve Martin. And, uh... I mentioned some of the other movies that he had done, and he's all, young man, you're very knowledgeable about the comedy business. And I'm all, well, I used to be a stand-up comedian. And he's all, you know who I'm talking to in the background here? That's George Shapiro, who's Jerry Seinfeld's agent. He passed away in 2022. George Shapiro was also Andy Kaufman's agent. And I said, can I ask, was Andy Kaufman that strange? George Shapiro said he was a piece of art that nobody understood. On June 29th, 2020, Carl Reiner died from natural causes at his home in Beverly Hills, California at age 98. George Shapiro, his nephew, said Reiner was in good spirits all day and had spent the evening watching television with Mel Brooks. Afterwards, around 10 p.m., he became unsteady and fell while walking with the assistance of his house keeper he lost consciousness and within a few minutes he had died it's too bad i guess we all can't live forever right all right that's today's video hope you guys enjoyed it hope you got some information out of it now go out have a great day and be nice to each other